Robin Smith, your attention. She's got an announcement for you. Good morning. I am super excited to introduce to you this year's 2013-2014 student retention team. So on the platform, you will see Alexa Wright, Jordan McCain, Amanda Mandel, Tanner Mitchell, Leanne Porter, Stephen Halecki, Stephanie Edwards, Caleb Tomkowiak, and Justin Hughes. And they, they are here, they are here to represent you. So on the screen, well, it'll be on the portal as well. You'll have all of their contact information. And I'm totally serious when I say this. If there is a situation or a concern or a policy or anything that um, is troubling you or getting in the way of your education, we want to know about it. We want to make Spring Arbor the absolute best that we can make it, and we need to hear your voice in order to make that happen. So these guys represent every population of student that we have on campus, and they are your representatives. So let them know your concerns so they can bring them to me, and we have the ear of the president. So um, please use us, help, let us help you have a great time at Spring Arbor. Thank you so much. And now would you welcome Morgan Postma as she shares in the song. staying on their electronics, or to be driving down the road and seeing somebody texting as they drive by a sign that says, don't text, and stuff like that. And you think, you know, in, in a, size, a room this size, or, uh, where there's over a thousand of you sitting here, um, you know, to ask you all to turn off all your electronics and do that just out of respect to those around you, I could say that, but I'm just gonna simply do this. I'm gonna make a request that you do that, just simply because it's the right thing to do. Also, during chapel, if you ever need to be excused um, for any personal business, be sure to take your ID with you as you leave. And also, um, I'm going to ask that you try to avoid leaving chapel until it's over. Um, every once in a while, sometimes somebody may need to do something, and they'll sit right down front, and they have to leave. And the speaker's closing their message, and the student will stand and you know, grab their backpack and leave. And it's a little bit disruptive, so if you would stay until chapel is over. And also help to start chapel at 10.05. Whenever I talk with a chapel speaker, I say, you've got 30 full minutes to speak. And I want to be sure that we give them all the time. And any minute that's interrupted at the very beginning of chapel tends to show up at the end of chapel. And I want them to feel free to be able to speak right up until chapel's over and not feel rushed. So right at 10.05, we're going to begin. So as much as possible, try to be seated and ready for chapel at 10.05. Um, if you've got your chapel schedules with you, I would just like to ask a favor of you, and if you would ever like to suggest a chapel speaker, I would be open to it. On that chapel schedule that you see, 14 of those people on the schedule are students that are chapel speakers that you have recommended. Uh, three of them are professors. You'll see Dr. White, Professors Woodstrom and Foster. Three of them are parents. You'll see on October 5th, 16th, 23rd, and December 2nd, three students have suggested their parents. Uh, there are eight alumni, Spring Arbor alumni on here. As you'll notice on October 2nd, or October, I'm sorry, October 7th, Greg Clegston is coming. Greg graduated in 96, and he has an office in the White House. He's a news correspondent and has met personally with, I think, six of the last presidents. And I, I cannot wait for him to come and share with you in chapel uh, this semester. So if you've got somebody that you'd like to suggest, feel free to do that. Also, this isn't spiritual gymnastics. We just don't do this because it's a thing that Christian universities do. We genuinely believe, as the scriptures say, in, he, in uh, Matthew 10, 20, it's not you who speak, but it's the spirit of your Father who speaks in you. That the person who comes and, and shares from the word, I believe, is bringing forth the word of God, and it may be to your life. 
And if you need to respond to something the speaker has said, I want to encourage you to respond and do spiritual business with the Lord. As you see through the scriptures, even the disciples minding their own business, fishing, and the Lord comes up to them one day and says, drop your nets, follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Just out of the blue, same thing could happen to you. Just in your day in and day out routine of being a university student, a chapel speaker could come up and say something that simply lights a fire under your life and you know that you need to respond. And I would encourage you to do that. And I will always be here at the altar after every chapel. If you ever need somebody to just pray with or talk to, let's do business with the Lord. Otherwise, this is just an exercise. We want it to be a spiritual appointment. Um, also, there's the, the upperclassmen will know there's a chapel toward the end called the Towns for Christ Chapel in which um, I love having students have the opportunity to come up and just perform for chapel, sing, dance, uh, all kinds, sorts of things have happened up on this platform for Towns for Christ <laughs> Chapel. I already have two people who have already signed up and or have expressed interest. So if you or a group of you would like to sing, do anything uh, for this chapel in December, would you please start letting me know because it fills up pretty quick. And then last, I'd like to um, just express my appreciation. This is probably more directed at the upperclassmen, but the, under, the new students will catch my drift. I'm on a listserv of chaplains of about 100 Christian universities around the country. And it's interesting because they will put forth conversations about the issues that they deal with at their Christian universities dealing with chapel. And it is literally amazing to read some of the things that they deal with of students during chapel that are literally out of control. Students during chapel, there was a, a chapel in which the chaplain said the, the speaker started speaking and a whole bunch of students just lifted up newspa campus newspapers in front of their faces and started reading them during chapel just out of protest for having to be in chapel. One chaplain said there was a, a group of students who would swear out loud during prayer just out of protest for having to be in chapel. Cha school after school, and I, want you to, I just want to express my appreciation for the students here at Spring Arbor who are, I believe, in pursuit of being godly men and godly women and who want to demonstrate that even in a time such as this. So I appreciate, and with a group this size, I mean, it's almost like it would be impossible for this to succeed. There are students from 40 different denominations who cover the spectrum spiritually from no relationship with Christ at all to those whose just hearts can't stop beating for Christ to those who are heading in all the wrong directions, to those who are heading in all the right directions, to those who have got issues at home, issues in their lives, issues in their studies, issues in their past, issues in their present, things that cause more static on the line than they know what to do with. And then at 10 o'clock, we take a 1,000 of you, put you in this room and for a time of worship and somebody to bring the word. And you would think that it would almost be impossible for that to succeed, given the dynamics of it all. And yet we're blessed to have a chapel that I believe in, in, in what students are saying, that's one of the things that they appreciate most about Spring Arbor University. And I want it to always be a student-focused chapel. I want people speaking to your lives, not to mine, and not to the professors, but to the issues that you're dealing with on a day-by-day -day basis. And we want to come alongside and do whatever we need to do to help you in your connection with Christ. And so that's chapel. This first chapel, Rather than having a speaker, I believe that the most important thing that can be said is something that's upon your heart. And so what I'd like to do is after we're done with worship, I'm going to come back up and just give you the opportunity. And, and during worship, you can be thinking about this. But I already know that there are many of you that God has spoken to your lives this summer. Whatever you were doing, whatever work you were doing, or ministry or service, whatever you were doing, God has taught you something. And when we're done with worship, I'm just going to stand down front and I'd like you to come up just give your name, where you're from, and just take a brief moment to just share, this is what God ta taught me this summer. This is what I learned from the Lord this summer. And even as Paul says in Philemon 20, let me benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. I would like to give you the opportunity to refresh your brothers and sisters in the Lord here by something that the Lord has taught you this summer. So would you begin to consider taking the opportunity to come up after worship and share what God has taught you? Grace, would you come up? She's going to lead us in prayer. And I'd like to offer and give you guys an invitation to stand. And if you want to come down and stand down front for worship, please stand and come down front. Grace will lead in prayer, and then we'll begin in worship. Thank you.
you please bow your heads with me? Lord, come into this place. I thank you for bringing all of our brothers and sisters here after a long summer in all different directions all over the country and even outside the country. I thank you for every single individual and what they represent in you and what they re represent in themselves. I pray that you bless this entire year and that you bless every single one of our lives. I thank you for what you do in this place, in this school, and how you move. I thank you that we are different. And I pray that you will let us shine above all other people around this place, in this community, and in our own selves. Thank you for bringing us together, and let us worship you wholeheartedly. In your name we pray, amen. Oh, 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 oh.
and he is jealous because he is jealous for me love's like a hurricane i am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all love a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affection are for me and oh how he loves us so Amen.
Lord, thank you for being here in this place today. We thank you for the rain. Use it to help us grow into who you want us to be. Be with us this year, this semester, this week, today. Be at the center of our hearts. Be at the center of our dorms. Be at the center of our university. We thank you for all the blessings in every way that you look out for us. Whether it's our plan or not, we know you have control and that will always be greater. We love you. Amen. You guys can have a seat. thing to him. He says, the young, young guy, he's not any old, much older than you guys are. The Lord says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I've got some things I want to say to the people, and I want to use your mouth to do it. And then Jeremiah does a funny thing. He gives God information, as if God doesn't know, because he explains to God that he's just a young guy, and he doesn't talk so good. And the Lord says, yeah, I know that. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. And that's what he does. And I believe even from that day until now, one of the most exciting things about the faith is that God puts his words in the mouths of his people to encourage the lives of others. And so I can't help but believe in a group like this. And I know a lot of the things you guys have been doing all summer and the ways that you've served and the places you've been and the way that God's taught you. So I'd like you to come up. If you've got something, now this isn't time for a sermon. This is, this is what God shared with me this summer and I'd like to bless you with it. So if you've got something on your heart, I know you do, come running up real quick. I've got the mic and you share and then take off. Okay, keep coming. Just kind of line up this way. Remember, it's not a sermon. If you start, if you start preaching, I'm going to take the mic from you. Hi, my name is Kayla, and um, I'm a video filmmaker. Um, God has seriously taught me about vulnerability and how I need to be vulnerable with Him and how I need to be vulnerable with others, and that everything I can't really handle on my own. Um, and so I just really need to trust in Him and to trust that He has put people in my life to help me with the problems that come my way. So 
I encourage all of you to be vulnerable with one another. Find an accountability partner. It's really mm -hmm. helpful. So do it. I'm serious. And your name and where are you from? I'm Kayla and I'm from Canton, Michigan. Woo. <laughs> How you doing? I'm uh, Colin, and I'm going to be a junior here, so... Where are you from? Uh, Petoskey, Michigan. All right. Preacher. And uh, it's really cool that Kayla just shared that because it's, it's pretty similar to mine. Oh, just talk a little louder here. <laughs> it's cool that she shared that because it's similar to mine. Uh, me and my best friend, love him. He's my accountability partner at home. And we probably went through half the summer without really living life with each other, without sharing with each other. And uh, one day he's like, hey, you want to go? S I know this is preaching a little bit. Yeah, it is. He said, he said, you, you want to go do a sprint workout? And I'm like, no, be there in 10 minutes. So we go, we go to this track and we're, we're sprinting. Uh, and then after we just, we just got together and we just said, hey, what's going on in your life? Do you remember me? Remember me, Colin? I'm your best friend. And we just shared and we shared. And that was the turning point of my summer. So share the victories, share the valleys, but just talk. Live life with somebody, because they're going to encourage you. Amen. And that's what got you. Good work. <laughs> Name and where you're from. Preacher. Hey, I'm Chris Wright um, from Lake City, Michigan, coming a junior this year. And um, God just really spoke to me this year about the fear of him and um, one thing I was just listening to a sermon and this gentleman one of the guys said if you truly fear God you will not um, be afraid to share the gospel with anyone and he said do you fear those people or do you fear God and it's either or so i um, trying to choose to fear God and encourage you guys to do as well Hi, um, my name is Kelly. I'm a senior at Spring Harbor. I'm from Eaton Rapids. Um, this summer, I spent two months in Uganda, and I think one of the main things I learned was just, um, I met all these kids who were orphans, and they were starving to death, and they didn't have any clothes, didn't have any parents, didn't know where they were gonna sleep, and they all w ran in this pack together. They were like, the oldest was like 11, right? And I remember just like, they had holes all in their clothes, and they wore the same clothes over and over again, and I was like, I wanna give them my shirt off my back. I wanna give them all my time and my energy. I wanna give them my shoes and all this stuff. And then I sat and thought about it and I thought, why don't I have this urgency to serve at Spring Arbor? You know, I don't see starving people here, but there are starving hearts mm. and we hide it. Why don't we serve with that urgency? Why don't we give 127% of ourselves instead of just our remaining time to the people around us? So I just encourage you, find a pain around you and meet it with everything you have because this is, this world is it's gonna come to an end soon. Hi, I'm Danae. I'm from Grand Rapids. I'm a senior. Uh, and I wouldn't be up here unless I had something really important to share. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I wanted to um, share a little bit of what I learned uh, last semester. I was in China. Uh, and then in, into the summer, I, I was in Thailand also. And um, guys, during that time, I can honestly say I completely lost myself. You know, here I have such a community, such a support. And like, there are over a billion people in China. There's, there's just so many people. And I lost myself. And I was like, I just felt so small and insignificant. And, and I think... Over the course of the summer, I've, I've been realizing just how big God is. He's huge. And, and it's in that identity. It's in that, that grandness and that incredible just aura of who God is that we can't even, we can't even know. <laughs> like, that's, that's where my identity is. You know, among all the faces, the crowds, the people. That is where my identity is, and the greatness and the awesomeness of God. Let's keep them real short. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Joey. I'm a freshman, and I'm from Shanahan, Illinois. Um, and I've I've been a Christian for a while. I've grown up in a Christian family, but I never understood how 
a man dying on a cross thousands of years ago saved me from the sins that I commit today. And um, that's always, you know, something that's held me back in truly pursuing my faith. And uh, this summer I went on a retreat and I learned that um, the, the speaker asked if, do we, do we want a God that is just or do we want a God that is merciful? Because in many cases those are complete opposites. But he said that our God is both. He's merciful and he's just. He sent his son to pay for my sins. So he, he was just in, in paying for sins, but he was merciful for me. And so that's what I learned. And uh, I was baptized from learning that. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to live life now. God bless you. God bless you. Good work. Hi, my name is Dakota. I'm from Adrian. I'm a sophomore. And um, this summer I worked at Camp Machindo. And um, it was just a really great growing opportunity. And one thing God really taught me was um, the expectations that we put on life. If you've ever worked at a camp, you know that camp life, very similar to real life, is um, unpredictable and a lot of unexpected things happen. And God just kind of showed me, you know, sometimes you get these expectations about how life is going to be. Like, oh, this semester is going to be great for me. I'm going to do this and this and this, and this is how it's going to work out. But really, that's like putting a limit on God. Like, we're limiting our lives. We're not saying, oh, God, like, work through my life. Like, make things happen in my life. I trust you with it. And just God taught me a lot about trust, like trusting in him because life is unpredictable. Like weird things are going to happen, but we just need to put our trust in God and believe that he's going to make it all work out for the best and that he's got our best interest at heart. So. Amen. Good work. Hi, I'm Marisha Collins and I'm a freshman. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And God really spoke to me about disappointments this summer. Um, you know how sometimes so disappointments happen in life and you're wondering why or how we just sometimes need to stop trying to understand the how and the why because it's not for us to understand and put our trust in the who in God and he will give us the Amen. peace of mind that we need Amen. good work hi everyone my name is Catherine McCown and I'm a freshman I'm from Grizzle Michigan um, I went to Haiti this summer and it was the hardest week of my life. I was so lonely and the first day I was in tears falling asleep because I didn't think that I could make it through the week. And that night I just kind of cried out to God and gave him all of my concerns. And I've never been one to pray out loud because I was always really nervous. But that week God just over and over taught me about the power of prayer. And when you get with another Christian, you hold their hand and you pray out loud to a God who cares about all of us individually and he can give you strength, he can give you anything. He can help you through anything and you can't be afraid to pray. Uh, I woke up at Mishindo with someone and something that God has shown me a couple of times this week was that it's not about me, it's completely about him and that whether I feel him with me or not, he's still right beside me through yeah. everything. Hi guys, uh, my name is Jonathan Sharp. I'm also a freshman here this year, and God just laid it on my heart to share something with you guys. And I went through a lot of hard things in the last few years of my life, but the one thing I learned is that you can never give up on God. He will always be with you no matter how hard things seem in your life. I went from having everything I could possibly ever want and imagine to being homeless and living in my car. And I questioned God every single day asking him, why, why are you doing this to me? Why can't I have what I had before? Why do you want this in my life? And he showed me through that, that it doesn't matter what you have or what you're doing, as long as you are serving me, you're doing what I want. And I learned so many amazing things through that. And I thank you guys for being amazing and being Christians in this university and giving me a place to go where I can serve God and love him just like you guys. Amen. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Liam May. I'm from Adrian. I'm a freshman biblical studies major. Uh, two and a half years ago, God rescued me from suicidal atheism. I was this broken, destitute, lonely kid and I became a Christian, and, I fit, and when I became a Christian, I figured I'm never going to be like all those other Christians that used to pick on me when I was an atheist. I'm never going to be judgmental. I'm never going to be condemning. And then this summer, I had, I think, three or four of my friends get pregnant uh, in high school. I had a friend who got addicted to meth, 
And it would have been so easy for me to do exactly what I'd said I wasn't going to do. But God's love just overwhelmed me for them. And I learned this year just how powerful the love of God is, that no matter how broken you are, no matter how hurting you are, no matter how broken your family or your friends are, that God's love is always there, and he always covers you. Amen. So in any moment of your life, no matter what you're doing, extend that love to those around you. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Jed DeHart. I'm from Flint, Michigan, and this, this summer I saw God's power work in a way that I never had before. I've heard a lot of stories of the ways that His power has worked in people, but I saw through someone's life very close to me just how His power can work. I saw someone go from a life just completely in the world, um, something that the world just holds very high, and it was a life of sex, drugs, etc., all that stuff. Um, and overnight, I saw this person's life completely change. Um, he went the next day, he went to a church service, gave his testimony, and he was just completely changed. And it was awesome to see, and that, just seeing that power, how it can change someone completely one day to the next, is just incredible. And that power is God's, and it's in each and every one of us, and he wants us to use it. And he will use us to, to use, just to show his power if we are willing to use it. Amen. Hi, I'm John from Hanover, and uh, I'll try not to uh, make this preachy. Um, so I used to be really depressed, like depressed enough to try to kill myself. And uh, I was depressed because God was this, this beautiful thing, but you can't understand God. Humans cannot understand God. So I just, I couldn't understand beauty and love and all that kind of things. And then I realized that, that if God made all, all of these things that we see every day, then wouldn't they be as holy as God himself? Isn't a tree just as beautiful as God if he made it? Shouldn't a Rembrandt be a Rembrandt no matter where it is? Thank you. Last one. My name is Carly Thompson. I am a freshman this year. I'm from Charlevoix, Michigan. Uh, this summer, I went to Simpson Park Camp in Romeo. And I don't know if you've been there, but it's a great place, home away from home. Anyway, there was a speaker there who talked about how, as Christians, we need to dream bigger. And I thought, you know, I, I've always thought I needed to be more humble, you know, not have that pride. But God just really showed me to look at my life through heaven's eyes to see that dream, that goal that I have, and know that with him on my side, I can achieve it. So I just want to encourage you all to do the same. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, looking at, looking at the clock, I wish that a uh, day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day, but we don't have that kind of time. I have to send you guys off to class, but let me share this with you. I believe that every day that we gather together, I believe that God has something to say to every single person's life here. The question is, what is he saying, and am I listening? And I know that because when Jesus hung upon a cross, there was a man on one side who didn't hear a thing that was happening, and he mocked the Lord, and there was a man on this side who deserved to die. He was a bum and a thief. He says two words to Jesus. I'm not sure what your prayer life is, but this was a two-word prayer. Remember me. And Jesus had a word for that man the same way he could have a word for you. He turned to that man as human history was hinging upon this moment in time as he was dying for the sins of the entire world. He looked to that man who deserved nothing and he gave him heaven. And he said, you will be with me in a few moments in paradise. God has a word for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go. Go.